There's a big difference between hand scraped wood and a scraped hand. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. A while ago, I did a video on making a card scraper. How do you take a, uh, a saw plate and cut a card scraper to fit your own weird, unique designs? And then I did a video on sharpening a card scraper. What do you do to get a burr on it? And I've also done a video on a cabinet scraper and how do you get the burr on that? And you think by now I would have answered all the questions that people have been throwing at me. But no, um, particularly in the last couple months, I've been having several questions coming in about how do you pick a card scraper? How do you how do you know what you want? And do you want one that's thick? Do you want one that's thin? Do you want one that's shaped? Do you need a collection of all of them? And, and same thing for the cabinet scraper. You can get these with some really thick plates or some that are really thin. Uh, what do you need to know about that? And then into the actual sharpening, what do you get in a burnisher? Um, I want to kind of go into some of the little details of how do you actually choose it and get a look at my collection and what I use on a normal, ba normal basis. And also, if you stay close to the end, I will be giving away a card scraper and uh, this should be kind of fun. So let's dive in and take a look at this. Now this is a small collection of my card scrapers, it's probably about a quarter of the ones I have on hand, but these are the ones I use most often. These are the ones that when I turn around I'm like, ooh, I need that card scraper for that design. These are the ones that I most often grab. And so I kind of want to go through some of the differences in steel type and thickness and what you want to look for. Now, what is a card scraper made out of? It's made out of a spring steel, which is, it's not a terribly hard steel. It's not one that can be, you know, hardened like a chisel or a plain iron, um, which a lot of people are like, hmm, don't you want your, your tool to be really good and hard so that it lasts longer? Yes, uh, but making it a little softer also makes it easy to sharpen so you can actually burnish off the edge uh, fairly quickly and easily. Also, the problem with having a hard steel is that when you turn the burr on it, you're actually going to be creating a little bit of a hook. And that hook can break off if it's too hard. If it's too hard, that hook becomes brittle and snaps. And I have a problem with that on uh, this card here. Uh, it's just a little bit harder than I'd like, and every now and then, if I'm pushing on it, I'll break the curl off and you know it's taking a good shaving, a good shaving, and then suddenly it's not taking any shavings. That that uh, that hook just snapped off. If it's too soft, then the hook wears off and slowly wears away until there's nothing left. So you're kind of looking for that in-between stage. And thankfully, the steel found in a, uh, a normal handsaw is right about what you want. And that's what I make this one out of. And most of the, the good ones now are made of a type of spring steel. I'm not going to go into the individual types, um, but if you're looking to make one yourself, getting an old handsaw can actually work really well. The big question that people ask is how thick a plate should I get? This one is about 20 mil, which is really thin uh, for a card scraper. The nice thing about it is though, it's really flexible and I can bend this one up the wazoo. And when you bend it, you can actually get very detailed in your scraping area. So you can just scrape this small area here and I can just scrape this one spot. And then I can move over a little bit and I can scrape another spot over here. And so I can use different spots along the card to make the cut. And that is really nice and useful. The problem with it being thin is that it's just kind of flimsy and it doesn't, it doesn't hold quite as well. Whereas then you can go and get a really thick card, like this one is almost 40 mil. Um, and uh, this one, because it's stiff, it doesn't bend as much. You can put a lot of force into it, but just not bending. The nice thing about that is it cuts a larger area, it's stiffer, and it will give you a really nice, clean, wide curl so that you can actually get that surface you're looking for. Most of the time though, I'm reaching for this one or this one here. This one is from DFM, which is going to be the card that I'm giving away. Um, or this one from Bearcat. They're both, um, the, well, the, the DFM is a 32 mil, and I think this one is a 28 mil. They're kind of in the middle, um, in between my thick and thin plate. And this one really gives you the flexibility to work back and forth between different things. Um, so usually I'm going to tell people get something around a 30 mil, the 32 from DFM, I really like that. Um, it's that nice balance and I can still do a small area or I can leave it flat and it's still stiff enough to do a larger area. So for thickness, you're going to want to do that, but sometimes you want a thinner one and sometimes I want a thicker one. So having a collection of three on hand um, allows me to do that. And then for the, the shapes and curves, uh, let's see, these three are actually ones that you can get on Amazon. Uh, I don't know what the company is. I'll leave a link to them down below as well. Um, they come in a set. They're, they're cheap. They're easy. They're a little bit stiffer than I like. 
Um, but for most of the time with these French curves, you can usually find a piece in the curve that will fit whatever you're working with so that you can do a molding. And if you can't find one that fits with a French curve or like this one from Bearcat that has this chair making, which is great for doing the arms um, and the large sweeping curve, uh, you can actually make your own out of an old saw plate. Make it whatever shape you need to fit a profile or a molding, and you can cut out exactly what you want to make. And eventually, after you've been working with card scrapers for a while, you're going to have a large collection, and the collection continues to grow until you have a whole lot of these specific ones that are just for a uh, intended use. Um, yeah, they, they multiply. Now, for sharpening, I, for a long time, used this one. This is a knife sharpener. It has these slight ridges down, which a lot of people are worried about that. They really don't cause any problem. All you need for a sharpener is you need a hunk of steel that is harder than your plate. And as I said before, the plates aren't terribly hard, so it's not that difficult. But most of the time, you're not going to want to get a, uh, you're not going to want to use a screwdriver because the the steel underneath the screwdriver actually might be softer than the plate of the card scraper. So getting an old burnisher for a knife cleaner or even a file that has a safe smooth side, you can burnish with that. And some people really like these the uh, the flat sides of a file. For burnishing, you can really get a nice clean surface with that. Uh, but you're gonna just basically look for a piece of steel that is harder than your card scraper. Now recently I got a tip from Bearcat about using a piece of carbide. And it's a, a carbide rod, uh, quarter inch, I'll leave a link to this down below as well. This is much, 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 much harder than that. And so it is, makes it a lot easier for drawing out that burr and shaping it. Um, you're not worrying about anything actually you know, is it harder? Yes, it's carbide. It's harder than the steel. The carbide is harder than my chisel, and if I wanted to, I could draw out a burr on the edge of my chisel with this carbide rod. Um, and so that's why a lot of times I'll suggest um, getting that. Um, also, uh, Bearcat makes uh, this that kind of takes the guesswork out. The pin is set in at, I think it was a 10 degree angle, something like that, which is just about what you want for burnishing the edge of the card scraper so you can keep it flat on there and use this tiny little carbide to do the work. So when picking a burnisher, you're just looking for a hard piece of steel, something that's harder than your card. The harder the steel is, the easier it is to turn, and that's why I've recently been going on to um, getting the carbide rods. So all that is fine and good for the card scrapers, um, but what about happens when you get into a cabinet scraper? Now, even the original blade that came with the cabinet scraper was fairly thick. It's 40 mil, and for a card scraper, that is really thick. Um, it's a, it's, you know, a stiff work, but when you put it in here, there's still a lot of flexibility because you're using a mechanical screw. And uh, just, I do cover this in the sharpening and how to use the cabinet scraper. Um, this is the front, so you're pushing with the blade angled forward. This is not the front. Don't push it this way. <laughs> that really confuses a lot of people for some reason. Um, but then I was sent these two plates uh, from DFM, these blue card scrapers. And he let me kind of experiment with them because he's kind of bringing these on the market. And I thought, it'd be kind of interesting to try 50 mil and a 62 mil um, as opposed to the original 40 mil. Does having a thicker plate really help? And so I put the, uh, the 62 mil in and gave it a try. And I really kind of like the stiffness of this. It makes it feel much, much better in the hand. Um, it functions really well. But uh, the problem with it is that when you go to tighten it down and put a bit of curve into it, um, there's a little bit more force than I'd like on this. And so that kind of becomes a problem. But with that being said, the thicker blade really makes it so you can march through some material and get these fantastic curls. The thicker blade just kind of, it rides on the wood much better than anything else I know of. And even through the, the horrible grain of this knot on hickory, I'm getting some really nice curls. And so you can see how these are coming out. They're a little bit thicker than I normally expect with a card scraper. But if you're getting through a lot of tear out, thicker means less work. And so I really, I kind of like having this thicker blade. But that being said, more often than not, I'm reaching for the 50 mil. It's kind of a great balance in between having the really thick 60 mil and the original 40 mil. Uh, it still has that stiff feeling when it's riding through the wood, so you can still take a fairly heavy cut. But you have more flexibility with the tensioning, so that you can actually put a bit more of a bend into it. And have a better control over the curl that you're making. So you can see how they're coming out. Just happy low curls. And I really like 
the 50 mil and the 62 mil and having a little bit of flexibility from that. So if you can find a Stanley plane that doesn't have the iron, um, sometimes having the finding the old scrapers is kind of hard. You can actually order these up from uh, DFM. And I'm really, really happy with them. So, yeah. So I really hope I answered some questions between uh, what are you looking for in a card scraper or the cabinet scraper. And I'm trying to answer some of these questions that have been coming up recently that I didn't answer in the earlier videos. Um, so if you want to see some of those earlier videos on how to actually turn in a burr, um, go check that out. I'll also be link, leaving a link to all those that I talked about below, before, uh, particularly the new uh, DFM cabinet scraper irons. These are really cool. I like that. Also, if you want to win this card scraper from DFM, I'm going to be giving it away to one of the people who comment below with the word scraper in the comment. I'm just going to do a search through comments for scraper and randomly pick one, and I will contact you and send this out. So if you'd like to find that, comment down below with the word scraper somewhere in your comment, and I'll be sending that out sometime in the next week or so. So that's about it. I know I'm still leaving out some information here and there, um, so if you have a particular question, let me know in the comment below. I'd love to answer it there. Also, feel free to go and check out the older videos on how I made card scrapers, how to sharpen them. There's a lot more information in those that may help you out as well. So uh, that's about it. Um, I really enjoy this. Good luck to those who are trying to get this. If you'd like to find out more information, all of it's down below in the description. Feel free to subscribe or find out more things I have on the uh, behind the scenes channel. And that's about it. Until next time, have a wonderful day.